go button. There we are, and we're live. Welcome back to the party, anybody who's been following along at home. Uh, this is the Talking Average Fitness Podcast. My name is Sam Burns, and I'm joined remotely, but not remotely, because you're now in the same state as I am, at least immediately. Um, I, I am now, but, I, yes, I am yes. now in the same state as you are. At this moment in time, my good friend and compatriot, Mr. Kevin McCarthy. Kevin, how are you today, sir? I'm doing well, Sam. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Is that um, also caffeine? It is also yeah, yeah, like double fisting types of. So you got like coffee mug, energy drink, more traditional caffeine, yeah. um, and then the dude Derek from More Place More caffeine. Dates. He makes a uh, yeah. He makes an energy drink <clears throat> that's it's got caffeine, but it's got a bunch of other things as well, and it's a lot of. Oh, stuff you were that, telling me about it. I remember. Yeah, this. yeah, it's a lot of stuff that I think when it's, it's got like. like mushroom powder and fairy dust and this one makes you think harder yeah and this one makes you see farther and yeah yeah the superhuman potion yeah superhuman potion <clears throat> and it comes in it comes in in fancy Pretty uh much. yeah fancy focus drug it's great um so we we got stumped not like stumped but we got pinged um <clears throat> so i had a i had, mm. a, I had a like a, a colleague of mine who uh, her name's Ferran McKay. She is an Irish woman living in the Netherlands, <clears throat> and she does high-level coaching development for CrossFit coaches. And very, mm. very smart woman. And I've had a, a lot of like back and forth. I love the internet. I get to like do go back and forth with a bunch of different people about a bunch of different topics. And she was yeah. listening to the episode where we were talking about um, does CrossFit have to get rid of the CrossFit games? Like, should CrossFit as an organization Ooh. be involved at the CrossFit games. Right. Right. <clears throat> and, and it, it and the, and the contention at the time was like, well, CrossFit is a brand and the yep. problem with a brand, it's like if Nike hosted their own basketball championship, like, you know, there's right. the probably a conflict of interest in some way there. Um, and so for CrossFit as a sport, and to be clear, we're not talking about the methodology here, but for CrossFit right. as a sport to get to, I think, where everybody wants it to go, which is, you know, a really high level worldwide like a type global, of yeah. Yeah. Which supposedly, if you're reading some of the things that they're saying about moving the games to Fort Worth, this is the first step mm -hmm. in making the games a mobile operation. Well, so that's what I was thinking was because in my head, I was before they had announced that it was moved to Texas. I was talking with a handful mm -hmm. of members about the games. This was like a couple weeks ago. And then as soon as it starts coming out, I was like, wait a minute. Dave's got my phone bugged. CrossFit listens to our podcast. For real? Um, <laughs> because, because we, we like, we've just kind of like tossed, just kind of like almost like soft launch, like, hey, this might be a smart thing to do. Yeah. Hey, maybe they should consider this. And all this stuff comes out and we're like, son of a bitch. Well, yep. <laughs> people, because people are listening, right? Um, but I don't know who they are, but some of them are. I think what, yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, some of them, someone is. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know who it is? It's Nicole Considine. <laughs> Probably. She listens, she works for CrossFit. That's the, there's the, there's the link right there. Yeah. Um, but I had said to someone Hilarious. at the gym when they were talking about, you know, Cross fitting as a sport and the games and whatever else they're like what do you think you know um because they'd seen something like that was going to be the last year at madison like what do you think is gonna happen i was like well like in the immediate future like mm -hmm. they might pick another city in the united states and just kind of like hang there for a couple like two three years yep. but i think what they need to do or what eventually will happen is they'll start to like each year it gets it's like the olympics where it gets hosted at a different city and I was like, I don't think you'll be able to keep the CrossFit games in the States. Like, I think it's going to have to travel to other countries, like from year oh, yeah. to year to year. And it'll just oh, be yeah. like on a one year contract. Cool. Next year, you know, Fort Worth hosts the games and the following year, Madrid hosts the games and the following year, Sydney, Australia hosts the games. You know, yeah. um, it, I think it, it will start to move. I think that's the next evolution in that mm -hmm. as a sport is as you had just mentioned, making it a mobile experience and a mobile event. Mm -hmm. And then when they, this may be a controversial take, but I'll say it. Um, the, 
uh, the dates that they posted was the games are from August 11th, sorry, the 8th to the 11th, which is four yep. days. Yeah. And immediately in my head, I was like, there, there's no physical possible logistical way to run all of their 72 divisions mm -hmm. in four days. It's not possible. It can, it like, unless they have access to like literally every single building and football stadium in the entire city, which I don't think is the case because, yeah, you know, but <clears throat> so I'm sitting there thinking like, I'm now just waiting for the good. But I mean, we had talked about this how many weeks ago on the podcast where like, yep. maybe as a the same podcast, move, the, the, yeah, the, the masters and teens and adaptive divisions need to be removed from the CrossFit games. Yeah. But I think what will happen is if that happens, which I'm just waiting for an announcement now that we've said it twice. Right. Um, Say it three times. And once like that happens, I, the, the masters adaptives and teens will get removed from the games there. See, now they <laughs> do it. Yeah. Um, but I think what we'll, and now they have to do it. Yeah. I think what will happen is if that happens, people will be upset and I fully understand why Absolutely. I get it. Yes. However, I think that another company, another governing body will then put something like, I mean, uh, CrossFit mayhem has their legends competition, which is a master's only event. And like, it's not, you know, it's, it's known because mayhem, but it's not like, you know, of like this big grander thing it's, but I think it could be, you know, especially since rich isn't competing anymore, like having that dude program the masters games and then mayhem puts it on and then loud and live with Wadapalooza, like Wadapalooza becomes the adaptive games or something similar to that becomes like the adaptive CrossFit games. And yeah. I'm sure there are some deals in licensure and whatever that like kind of in the weeds that would need to happen there. But I think that that will lower the financial burden on CrossFit for all those different divisions and the logistics. And it just like, Hey, this is just a four deal. This is the elite competition, like the world championships because the Olympics and the Paralympics exist separately. They're like both equally like incredibly impressive to watch but yeah. they don't happen concurrently they're two separate events and so i think that same idea is what will happen with the games is the crossfit games especially now that it's just scheduled for the four days will be just the elite individuals and teams and then some other governing bodies will pick up the adaptive division the masters or age group divisions and put those on and I mean, we've seen it before during the two years of what the fuck that happened at the CrossFit competitive season from 2019 to 21, where we're like, no one knows what's happening. If it, the need arises, the community will step up to the plate. You know, if it's like, well, the masters are gone at the games. What do we do now? Rich and the mayhem team be like, we got you guys. Let's fucking roll. Um, so I think that's that'll be where it goes. I'm just waiting for announcements now. It's... I, there's so much in my head and I don't, I don't want to lose the, lose the plot. Cause I, I swear we're like, this is the most on track we've been on a podcast <laughs> in recent memory. <laughs> so I don't want to lose the plot it, yes. here. This, this, so, this is the most, this is the most on track beginning we've ever had. It is. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to write a couple notes down on my little mini whiteboard here. So these are th the things that I don't want to forget are things that, could come out of having to like scale, right? So part of the thing, CrossFit gets away with a lot yep. because they own the rights to the word CrossFit. The event okay. they run is the CrossFit Games. They get away with a lot. For example, they have an intimate partnership with Rogue. And if you believe Greg yep. Glassman, there's no paperwork that exists anywhere. It's just, it's all done on a handshake and a, and a good word. So like yep. CrossFit says, oh, yeah. Rogue, this is what we need this year. And Rogue says, we got your back. And in, yep. and in partnership, like Rogue is made, like everybody knows that like Rogue is the shit. <clears throat> well, yeah. part of the reason they get away with that is that like Katie and Bill Henniger are here in America and Rogue is here in America and the games is here yeah. in America. And if you just, let's say... We're going to move across the pond. We're going to go to Madrid. I love the idea of Madrid, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we go to Madrid, all of a mm -hmm. sudden, the logistical cost of Rogue doing what it does 
goes yep. through the roof, right? And then yeah. in addition yeah. to that, you might not be able to get away with things like um, saying, hey, American CrossFitters, we have a need for 2,000 volunteers to come in and be athlete control, be equipment control mm -hmm. to, you know, or like the yep. absurd number of U.S. Uh, seminar staff who they co-opt as judges and they say, okay, your yep. assignment is you're going to the games. They'd have to fly them all to fucking yeah. Madrid, you know? So, yeah. Well, so I think you'll have a much harder time getting away with shit like that if you're not going to pay them, you know, because right. most of the times like all the judges and, and athlete control and, you know, more so the bigger crew is like, I've, I've known people that have gone to do this, like, um, um, what's wrong with like equipment, can, like they've moved the stuff. Yeah. Like, okay, equipment the men's control. heats are done. All the, all the hundred men's barbells that are on the floor need to leave and all the hundred women's barbells need to come out, Yeah, you know? And they're like, they're just rolling plates and moving sleds. And like that whole team is massive. Yeah. And I knew someone who went and they, they uh, did essentially like equipment control at the 22 games. Yeah. And it's like, what they got was, they got, you know, like outfitted in, you know, the, you know, two or three noble shirts that have, you know, like event staff on it, the front and the back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they got like the noble shirts and like a pair of shorts. And I don't think there was a pair of shoes included, but I could be wrong. If, if, if I'm absolutely wrong and someone was on this team and they were like, it was way better than this. Sure. Please let us know because I could be a thousand percent wrong. Yeah. But from what I saw, this is just purely based on his Instagram documenting this whole journey of okay. volunteering okay. was you got the you know, handful of apparel that says event staff. Um, they like fed you lunch at, at the thing. Yep. So like it, w while you're going around, they're like, here's your plate of food. Yep. So you lunch and that was it. Like the hotel, the travel, the everything else was on. Oh, it's on as you. far as I know. Well, and, and, and like, then you, and, you, yeah, your pass gets you, you in know, most places. So like you don't have to, you don't have to pay to attend right. the so event. You don't have to have... Right. So if you if you're like off you're like you're not responsible for the evening Coliseum event, you just can just flash your event staff badge yeah. and then you can go in and, and watch the event. So that that definitely is, you know, a, a nice perk of being there is you can anytime that you're not working, you can you are free to kind of like have full access to the games and everything that that includes um while you're there and and but still like that's a lot to go and volunteer and spend 12 yeah. hours carrying plates i don't know if you guys have ever carried plates but <laughs> like like carrying like w there's a reason that everyone once you finish the workout you, you know you finish diane you roll around on the floor you got 225 loader on your barbell you don't strip the plates and carry them you just roll your barbell back to the stack of plates because you're like i don't want to carry this shit See, that's the thing, though, is like for for whatever goddamn reason, that seems to be like a secret trick because I do it at the gym that I'm at every every time. Like, I can't remember what it was. We I think it was like it was. What do we do? Push press. It was heavy push press. Two sets of five, three sets of three, five singles. Bill do a heavy single oh, push beautiful. press. It was great. Beautiful. Great heavy day. Um, oh, yeah. And, and we. We finish, I, I go for my last set and I miss because it would have been like a fucking 30 pound PR or some stupid <laughs> goddamn thing. And so I miss it and I let it drop to the ground. I'm like, ah, s screw this shit. By the way, my hammies are blown up from that workout. I'm amazed. And that's like the only thing that's telling me like I did stuff right is on a heavy push press day, my legs are blown. Yeah. Um, so I, I start yeah. rolling you the bar. Yeah, you should use your posterior chain for some yeah, hip exactly. Extension. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. It was like, oh, good on me. Yeah. Um, and so I, I start yeah. pushing the bar with my feet, you know, and just like rolling it around. Yeah. And I, I had three or four people looking at me like I had six heads. And like they are yeah. they've already stripped one side and they're like holding a stack of plates and they're watching me roll the watching bar. Watching you just <laughs> Yeah, like halfway across the gym and then unload it. And you could see the gears turning in their head. Yeah. And they're like what what oh 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 yeah. yeah so 
I've got one. This is like, if you want to explode people's brains when it comes to fitness, this, we were doing, um, it was like a heavy deadlift day. And I had an athlete, um, that would like had been at the gym for a while. So not like brand, brand new. Right. And they're like, you know, when you start like getting plates on the bar, you know, sometimes you're like struggling. They're like the crumb rubber ones. So yeah. they don't slide on the floor as well. They like, they have some grip there. So what you had is you either like straddle the bar, hook the plate, you kind of like lift up and slide, mm -hmm. yep. but they weren't doing the lift up. And so like, they couldn't quite get it. It's heavy bar. Yeah. And so they're like, they're having trouble getting plates on the bar. And they're like, Kevin, can you help me with this? I'm like, I'm going to show you something's going to blow your mind. I grabbed a two and a half pound plate, put it on the floor, rolled the bar onto the two and a half, slid the plate on, rolled it off. And I watched as seven people in the room, their brain did a Windows 98 update at the same time. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> yes. it was fucking awesome i said they like everyone looked just just the yeah. amount of smoke coming out of people's ears they were like wait a minute what the fuck did you just do <laughs> and i was like ah, hey and so now it, whenever we do a deadlift day everyone that was in that class whenever i have them for deadlifts again they like they grab their bar, they grab their clips that they need, and they grab one two and a half pound plate to use as the wet. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are this is why we get paid the big bucks. It's just these little it's tips absolutely. and tricks like that. That's and then and then if you want to get really fancy, <clears throat> you actually yeah. don't have to use a two and a half pound plate. If you get if you if you know how to do it, you can figure out how to roll the plate closest to the interior of the bar onto a spring collar, and then. Mm. you've got just the spring collar doing it and you can kind of straddle it so it doesn't go anywhere and then load it on and yeah. then go it off. But then you have zero additional. <clears throat> That's next level. All right. Anyway, so next level stuff. We're so close to staying on track. We, 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 we fucked it up. We saved the getting <laughs> off topic to the middle. We're, like, yeah. we're doing great. We're doing great. Wait, side tangent. <laughs> yeah. God damn it. All right. So, <clears throat> so, so if the games was going to go, it was going to scale, Right. And they were going to go. Yep. And, and this is a thing that has been talked about for a decade there. It's an incredible cost to have international athletes come only to America and for the American athletes to basically be like, fucking awesome. Great. Um, yeah. It, if we were going to scale part of the things that they would, there would yep. be a lot to figure out, you know, how are you going to get rogue equipment overseas? Is Rogue going to be the provider? Because does it make logistical sense to send equipment overseas? And so then who's the provider? And that's like a whole other question. The judges are yeah. all staff. Yeah. If you're not going to fly them, who are the judges? Does that open the possibility for like a certified judging program? And so like basketball officials or baseball officials, you are a professional umpire or a professional ref. Could you be a professional functional fitness judge? It's a whole... A whole yep. fucking rabbit hole that exists. There's but, a lot in that. Yes. And so the so it starts with, though, if you're going to do that, if you're really going to make it international, you almost have to take it out of the hands of CrossFit. And maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I'd love to see, yeah. like, no. and that's not yeah. to say that CrossFit shouldn't be involved, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know that they can be in charge of it, right? So... Uh, yeah, or, or what would need to maybe what would need to maybe happen is if they were going to stay in full control of it, like, nope, this is our baby. We're going to do it. Fine. But then I think that there needs to be a team of people that's more than just Dave and Boz hmm. that are responsible for the sport side of things, because yeah. you have Dave is the, um, Justin, Burke Justin role. Burke He's is the, out I, director of, He's out. He's done. Yeah. Um, I don't know where he went, but he's done. And so Dave is at Justin's job, which I forget the title, but we're say like the director of sports. I think it and is then, director of sport. Director of sport. And then Adrian Bosman is the director of games. Mm -hmm. So um, how are those two different? I don't know. But um, the, it's just those two kind of like as the division of sports. And then you have people that are allotted to like, you know, CrossFit training and all the certificate programs. And yeah. then people yeah. that are like more run the affiliate side, like Austin. And, you know, you've got the team running cap and all that fun stuff. And it's like a relatively for like what people might assume is the scale of CrossFit. It's a relatively small team yeah. that's trying to handle everything. 
And I think if they want, if they wanted to keep control of the games and scale it to the, we're going to go international with this thing. I think you'd have similar to how we've seen a split between like CrossFit as a sport and CrossFit as a methodology. Yes. I think you'd have CrossFit HQ and then the CrossFit games team yeah. like that, that becomes because your whole year would be trying to set up logistically. I mean, <clears> the <throat> amount of time it takes to figure out, okay, who's the equipment. I mean, everything that's set, you know, rewind the podcast four minutes, play it back real slow as Sam's going through all the logistics of just one part of trying to make oh, it yeah. international. Oh yeah. It's, that's such a process. And if anyone that's may or may not be listening, any of our tens of listeners have read Dave Castro's book about outlining his process of making the 2017 games. Have you read it, Sam? I haven't yet. That's one of the things that's on my list. It's like, it gives a really good, I, I didn't really understand the scope or scale at which running the games existed and like what that took until I read that book and Dave outlined, it was literally like, I have an idea for a workout. Like the idea for an event just pops into his head for like mm. at the games. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, he writes on a sticky note and slaps on the wall idea. There it right. goes. And he like starts to fabricate the structure of everything. Once he has a handful of ideas, he's like, okay, I want this theme to carry through mm. from the open. So that's where he like, you know, in 2017 in the open was like, the year of the dumbbell. So we right, had right, right. 17.1, which is a dumbbell snatch burpee box jump over. 18.2 was the toe to bar bar muscle up dumbbell walking lunge and power clean with a pair of dumbbells. And then regionals in 2017 was exclusively dumbbells. There was not a barbell in sight. Yeah. It was awesome. <clears throat> yeah. But so like that theme kind of carried with the dumbbells. And then um so he like likes those themes and these evolutions of things to kind of, you know take place throughout the open the regionals and the games and how he thinks about it and like he'd get on the phone with bill henniger and be like hey bill i have an idea for an event is it is there any way possible you can make this piece of equipment do yeah. this and yeah. bill says let me get back to you and yeah. he hops into the lab over there and they're like so then he calls dave back and goes well i can't make it do this but i can make something like this do that and dave goes let me get back to you. And right. he starts playing with events and like movements. And he's like, well, what if I program this in here, Bill, can you like, let's make, can you make this do this, but also this. And he's like, mm -hmm. let me get back to you, you know, and they're going back and forth. And so the like making of the event would sometimes hinge on can rogue build something to facilitate it. Sure. And so like, once it all came into thing, then he's like, okay, I can do this event then dave starts like tweaking and the amount of times that he has people test an event is yeah. stupid I he's bet. like th this this is the event i have the idea and i want it to take exactly 13 minutes and 20 seconds and he says this in the book like i has an exact time i wanted to take the exact stimulus so you have someone do it, it took 14 minutes nope so he'd tweak the loading a little bit take 10 pounds off the bar and take two reps off each movement right Just try it again oh it took 13 minutes and 17 seconds still not perfect tweak it again. And so I remember there was a bit in the book where he was talking about having a, cause James didn't compete that year, Hobart yeah. and like having James test events. And he like over the course of a three day weekend that James flew out, he made James test the same event, like four or five different times over gross. the weekend just to gross. like, just, it's, it's so gross, but he's like, that was the idea of like how meticulous the designing of the games was and if you sure. haven't read dave's book go mm. read it because it will really you'll sit there and go holy shit and then once you've read the book come back and listen to this and <laughs> you'll be like hold like this is such an operation yeah to try and like whole oh. anyways all right there's so, so much that goes into the games and trying to scale it huge logistical hurdle and so this is this is the this is the reason why the olympic location gets picked a decade ahead of time because yes. it takes that fucking long. They also like they literally build a city for the Olympics. There's yeah. that too, but that's neither here there, nor there. You know, we're, hey. <clears throat> we're not here to make that. So anyway, so all of this, we're talking about like issues involved in scaling. And Ferran reaches out to me, and she's like, "Have you heard of the IF3?" And mm -hmm. I had heard of the IF3, yeah. but only peripherally. Um, and leave it to my leave it to my European counterparts to basically like knock me upside the head and be like hey stupid american 
Like, open your fucking eyes. This is and a metric so, system. <clears throat> you see, yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that the would metric be awesome. system. If they, uh, if this just short little ideas, if they moved the games internationally, would they start measuring things in kilograms? Oh. And that would just, could you imagine? But like, I, this is not to throw Noah Olsen under the bus. He's just the first American crosser that sure. popped my head. Like Noah Olsen, and he's like a golden retriever. Like, 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 yeah, <laughs> like Noah rocks up the bar, and they're like, "All right, this event is you know twenty one fifty nine of deadlifts at one hundred and two kilos." And you just again, Windows ninety eight updates. He goes, "Fuck, <laughs> what's one hundred and two kilos?" I'm just because I could see that being a thing. Like you go to do an event, it's in kilos and you're like, I don't know how fucking heavy that is. So you don't know how to pace it now because yeah. you don't, a number doesn't, you know, it doesn't compute I, because I remember years ago, in, you know, freedoms per Eagle. I so. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tomahawk missiles per, <laughs> per Abrams tank. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so the I have three, so th this is what the rest of this is going to be like. We're gonna we're gonna talk about the IF three and trying to figure out like is yeah. this a thing? Um, mm -hmm. it, so I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna bop back and forth <clears throat> as cool. we do a bunch of different bits. So yeah, the IF three is the International Functional Fitness Federation. So there's three Fs, mm -hmm. hence IF three. Let me yep. do a little bit of the sharing here. Present. Um, share screen. When you were telling me about this, that when you were like, let's talk about the IF three, I was like the fuck is that yeah, and you were right. like it's international fitness so i was like okay i'd heard of that i just did not you know act Ooh, infinity these hooligan these hooligan youths we are hooligan youths all right so the if3 so this is providing yeah. international leadership structure and resources to fuel the growth of functional fitness as a sport as well as enrich the experience and safety of its worldwide participants so right off the whack it's got the bullshit jargon that you know of like if you think of like yeah. the ioc the International yeah. Olympic Committee, like, good on you guys. You're saying all yeah. the right things. Yeah. Um, You're saying all right stuff. It means nothing. Absolutely. And <laughs> like, that's not in any way to knock this. Like, this is not because it's international or anything like that. It's it's just like this is the stuff that like large organizations put on a website. Yeah. Um, I three is a nonprofit, so it's a nonprofit, independent, international governing body. Is the IOC a nonprofit? It's the IOC I, I, like. I honestly don't know. The but IOC is a nonprofit up. organization. That's amazing. I had no idea. What, you learn uh, okay. something new every day. Apparently. Wow. Okay. So, <clears throat> governing body for functional fitness as a competitive sport. Uh, provide leadership structure and resources. That's interesting. Um, our mission is to promote and grow. Blah, blah, blah. We ultimately aim to create a pathway to competitive functional fitness to be included in the Olympic Games. Wow. Wait a minute, like, hold up. Wait yeah. a minute. What, Hank? Would that would be absolutely fucking wild? Well, could you like? How I don't even. Well, because here's the thing: is like I don't. I my brain just so, did a Windows ninety eight update as hang well. Hang on, hang I, on, hang on. Go ahead. So you, I don't know that you can. Well, so, so that's what I'm saying. Well, but where my head went is. Because in my head, immediately, I was like, functional fitness had, like, again, I would just use the CrossFit games. Because I think functional yes. fitness would, I just saw, like, a weightlifting thing, like, Masters and Worlds. Like, so I think mm -hmm. I, IF3 might include, you know, like, uh, Olympic weightlifting. Um, uh, it, but, it does everything. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yes. It's, so, it's CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for CrossFit, I'm like, the games is multiple different events. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how would they be able to have multiple different events be an event at right? the Olympics? <laughs> but then my brain, but then my brain went fucking track and field. Like that's the same mm. sport, multiple events. Now for a track and field team, you have diff hold on. I know you're like the gears are grinding. Yeah. 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 Um, but you, like, I'll tell you where I'm going with this. You have for track and field, you have multiple athletes that perform each event and like mm -hmm. occasionally you'll have the same athlete like usain bolt does the 100 and the 200 because he just happens to be your best at both right so something like that but that like you have your 100 meter runners you have your 200 meter runners you have your 400 800 mile uh, two mile right long jump broad jump javelin like you have all these events that fall under the bucket of track and field similar idea with crossfit oh, no. you have all these different events 
could you make it a, like you have a U.S. team and Noah Olson goes and does your thruster muscle up and then Matt Fraser goes and does your it's, row and hand. It's Olympic walk. grid league. That's what exactly. That's it's Olympic grid league. It. No, that's don't go there. No, I no, don't like grid league. I, I didn't say that like, <laughs> uh, but so you could do it as like you have a team doing like, you know, each person does their I, event. Yeah, I get not that. Say, cause, well, but grid league was bonkers. So I'm so like, grid they were like fucking bonkers. It's still like, bonkers. You know, it is like the Florida grid league is out of control. They're like, all right, how many parts of your body can you touch to a pull up bar in one movement? Seven triple, <laughs> fucking triple touch. Yeah. Yeah. And so like that, so I don't agree with that part of it, but like the structure of not like in terms of the events, but the structure of you have, have a team of athletes and then you have your one or two athletes to do each event Yeah, could be an interesting, whatever, or, it's the same idea. Like it has multiple events, same as track and field does. It's just you like one athlete does all, it's like a decathlon, like yeah. one athlete does all the tests. And then you see who like same idea. Cause decathlon tests multiple different events with the same athlete trying to like, who's the best athlete out of those guys. So it'd be a similar idea. Right. I and, just, and I, that yeah, might be, the decathlete is the best is per, is in my opinion the best option right um yeah. or gymnastics like i believe on a on a on an olympic level gymnastics team every member does everything right right so they each perform yes a vault a floor routine a beam a whatever um I think it would mean if that happened, hypothetical, yeah. right? Yeah. B you, major hypothetical. Oh, so hypothetical. <laughs> like <laughs> fucking smoke and mirrors hypothetical. Um, yeah. It would end up having to be like a decathlon. So you'd have a functional fitness event. The yep. functional fitness event would be like a decathlon where it's a, it's a, it's an umbrella event of multiple smaller events. You'd have couplets, triplets, major lift, gymnastics, endurance, whatever. Yep. It would be in the end of the teams. Mm -hmm. Teams would no longer be a thing because you'd have a right. team of individuals. You can't have a team of teams, right? Right. It's not bobsled, you know. Right. Um, and it, it's a it's a novel concept because what it does is it takes the the lift off of the shoulders of the IF3. You get it to a certain size and then it gets engulfed by the Olympics. Yeah. And so like as a logistical hurdle, it's um they don't have to solve all the problems. Right. So it's a novel concept. They just have to get it big enough and popular yep. enough for it to be absorbed. Or yep. for there to be a pathway to include Olympic whatever whatever. Um I still think it's a it's a colossal goddamn logistical hurdle but oh I mean, what, like, thousand percent that would be yeah. incredibly difficult to get at that point but <clears throat> um that would be as that would be absolutely wild but in a similar thing if it was like it wipes kind of the team competition because you can't have a team of teams it takes yep. the teams off the table yep same thing as we were just talking about earlier in the podcast like the community would rise up and and mayhem would program like a the major team event for the year and right. all that fun stuff. So like something would evolve and move and yada, yada, yada. But, um, okay. My brain has calmed down from that explosion uh, for real. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we serve to provide rules, movement standards, safety protocols, blah, blah, blah. Training for judges. That's interesting. Wow. Um, so there's a, there's worlds, which is their big event, I would assume. Right. So there's tests yep. for, I have three masters and juniors worlds, right? So apparently if I go up here, events themselves, there's worlds. Let's go to worlds. <clears throat> Let's see what this says. Um, that's not what I wanted you to do. Oh, it's a separate web page. Share this tab. Here we go. So now we've got I have three worlds. Yep. Um, it's in Oslo. Hey, yay, Norway. Cool. There we go. Venue, officials. There's an this athlete hotel. Right. Test categories. Hey, look, that's a worm. <laughs> but it wasn't made by Rogue. That's uh, weird. you're right. It's comp something. 
Yeah. I don't know. Can't read that. But <clears throat> can't read it. Uh competitive programming in an IF three medley style competitions follows the following methodology. Tests are known in characteristics, i.e. categories or capacities being tested stay constant, but are unknown in demand, i.e. Actual movements, repetitions, load time domains being tested change at each competition. Interesting. So each event is like the chaos event of the games where they're like, hey, you walk out on the field, you can see a box and a skier, and you're like, you're just going to go. Well, it's, it's, probably more, it's probably more like you know you're going to do uh, a Metcon triplet, gymnastics, weightlifting, yeah. monostructure. Right. Um, yeah. You don't know anything else about it, though. Until uh, tests like, are created with you. Exactly. Or, yeah. Tests are created with the intention of allowing athletes to perform maximum potential. T tests for the World Championship are initially created by the programming committee. So they got a committee. All tests themselves are then performed and tested for safely. Good. I would fucking hope so. Final testing protocol for competition sent to board of directors. Oh, that's another thing I want to look at as board of directors. Oh, All right. So the individual medley is two. Body weight, endurance, three. strength. Skill, yeah. Mixed uh, power. Functional fitness, 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 fitness. Okay, so capacities tested are endurance, strength, body weight, skill, mixed, and power. Interesting. Brief so the mixed would be like the Metcon. Everything else would be like an individual, almost kind of like a grid test where like for, for skill, it's like you're going to do 100 chest bar pull-ups for time type deal. Right. And, and for, for power, it'd be more like a sled push or a yoke carry or something in that regard. And body weight would just be, you know, I don't know. Right. She's rope climbing, so how many rope climbs can you do in eight minutes? Right, so strength this is, is body weight movement paired with aerobically challenging movement. Skill or strength work with weights. So this is your your max efforts, whatever. Yep. Um, skill is pacing, range of motion, skill, and core control. So they're probably doing L-sits and shit. Um, L-sits and... Mixed and, is your yep. classic couplet triplet, it sounds like. Yep. Um it tests the athlete's ability to transition between movements before movement variations, control pacing, um, and then power. This test contains a lot of work to be performed in a short amount of time. So this is work capacity. Yeah. Um, usually less than five minutes. And then there's a team wow. variation. Okay. Team medley. So they got two mixed operations and a strategy. Mm -hmm. Requires the team to formulate a unique plan in order to finish movements fastest. Interesting. So it's a choose your own adventure. Mm. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna share this tab. I'm gonna close this tab because what I want to know now is so that's uh, that's worlds and like that sounds yeah. cool. They had a you know let's look at the euros here. There was I'm pretty sure I saw a thing like I, maybe last year. Yeah, where there was a CrossFit athlete that was kind of like a fringe games level athlete. You know they'd like been to the games one year, missed for two years, been to the games the next year. As female athlete yeah. that. I can't remember her name, but I remember seeing a post that like she went from kind of being this fringe like games of athlete and then went and competed in the IF3 World Championships and won. Huh. And I was like, go figure. Well, I mean, it tells you it tells you where the currently, at least where the best in the sport are putting their efforts. Um, yeah. <clears throat> all right. So check this out. OK, so prelim test. This is your endurance test. Two rounds yeah. from time, 20 minute cap, 75 double unders, 750 meter row, 750 meter run. Interesting. Okay. Test two. So this is a preliminary test, individual, final individual test. <clears throat> so test two, five minutes to find a max snatch, hang snatch, overhead squat complex. Ooh. Ooh. It's kind of spicy. Yep. Um, three rounds for time, 12 or 10 pull-ups. I already don't like that, but that's not uh, yeah, there. I, okay. Six meter handstand walk. And that's where all the American athletes go. What the fuck is a meter? <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's like 20 feet. Um, <clears throat> so six right legged pistols, six. Le I, I love how the Europeans are like, yeah, let's just say the word pistol. And the Americans are like, no, 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 it's offensive. We have to say single leg squat. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's just hilarious because like this is America. The, yeah. the Second Amendment is fucking enshrined in the Constitution and nobody wants to say pistol. But the Europeans are like, well, you can't even look at a firearm without a, a writ sealed from our king. But we'll just write the word pistol. Um, yeah. 
pistols and a handstand meter into two rounds for time. Oh, dang. Okay. Uh, chest oh, work, wow. fewer reps, eight meter handstand yeah. walk, Longer six and six. Walk. Yep. Into one round, eight and six bar muscle ups, 10 meter handstand walk, six, six, 10 meter handstand walk. That's pretty slick. I like that. Time cap, 12 minutes. That's spicy. You're moving right along. That's you're, you gotta be like on all unbroken everything. Cause you're basically going like 20, 30, 40 foot handstand walk roughly. Well, it's, you have to do all of this in a minute. If you were going to hit the cap, because it's three rounds, two rounds, and one round, right? Yeah. So, that's so six, you'd have to do all of that. So that that's six rounds all put together in a 12-minute cap. So you're, you're allowed two minutes per round, roughly. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, two minutes per round, um, which is better. That's that's better than I thought it was. Yeah, why are they still, splitting? You gotta be moving. Why are they splitting? The, I don't know. I, I'm not going to find out. They're not going to tell don't me. Ask I don't, me. Don't ask me. Special regs. Uh, AMRAP, six minutes. Forward roll to support on rings. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Sam's all in now. Sam's all in. IF3 for life, baby. Was it, was it like, what a, what a, also, oh, fuck. Kettlebell get-ups? Get fucked. <laughs> oh, man. It's a, like a Turkish get-up? Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so kettlebell, like, with 53 fucking pounds in your hand, Oh. from ground to standing and return that's you know two on the right side two on the left side and then you drop that kettlebell you go to a heavier kettlebell and so this one's 82 kilo 80, 82, 82 pounds uh 88. 10 meter right hand carry 10 meter left hand carry in the on that's four roll to support on rings i bet you I would love to see the absurdly small number of crossfit games athletes who can do a forward roll to support um, is that is that starting from a support or like starting from the bottom of the rings? Like you uh, jump up in there, you're like from a hang. So movement standards document. Da, I don't da, know da, how da. you would do that. Like in my brain, I cannot conceptualize how you'd go from a hang, do a forward roll of some sort and then end up in a support. But I'd understand like if you were already in a support, how you could like forward roll back into support. Yeah. Let me, um, I lost my thing. <clears throat> Present arms. Uh, so it says movement standards for complete movement standards for entries forward roll blah 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 blah, blah. and kettlebell but here yeah which I did and then did it, it brought me over separate? here hmm. is it like it, new there's nothing there interesting. Oh, you have to download the thing. Scroll down. Oh. You have to download the whole book because the book has all the movements that they're going to use. Right. Okay. Okay. Oh, so we're doing it. All right. We're. Can you just all search 155 roll? pages? Standards forward roll on rings. Okay. Rep start vertical support. So you're starting in the support position. Okay. So you start. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. <clears throat> rep end vertical support. Rep requirements. And what's it show me for? Vertical support is defined as fully supported on hands above equipment, typically horizontal bar or rings. Elbows fully extended. Yeah, baby. Chest up, back straight. Body weight is not supported with any parts other than the hands. Easy, i.e. resting trunk on the bar. Okay. By that movement standard, none of the uh, pullovers at the games counted. Just saying. Oh, none. None of them. <laughs> um. Complete 360 rotation around the rings. Go from rep start to rep end in one fluid motion. So at no point can you like stop and like fidget yourself to like get into a, it has to be like from here right. into your roll, land back here. Wow. Them's be some strict standards. Well, I mean, so uh, uh, CrossFit Gymnastics staff, we've talked about this for a long time is like the, the concept of enforcing virtuosity yep. in a competition, it'd be very yep. difficult to do, right? You'd have to have yes. an, like, so uh, a good example would be um, a man test, right? Mm -hmm. Parallel bars, full, full top parallel bar support on one side, elbow supination, straight arm lockout, yep. one strict dip, straight arm traverse across the parallel bars to the other side, one strict dip. Then yep. reverse 
straight on traverse to your starting position. Two strict dips. Forward, mm. two, return, three, three, four, four, five, five. It needs to be Just done. Go as far as you unbroken. Oh. That's called a man. You test. like you, you just keep going after five or no, no, it's, it's, it's like it's like a, it's like a body of work impossible. done for time. Um oh, or, or, I see, like so how quickly can you get to five and five? But the but the but the qualifier is you have to retain straight arm lockout the entire time. So like you can't like a lot of people, if you watch like uh P bar Elizabeth from the games yeah. two years ago, they're like they're hunched over like Four, shoulders roll four, trap dominant, elbows flaring out and shit like that. None of that. Yeah, they're, count. they're just like they're just like muscling there. They're like, all right, um, um, I've I've never done this. I need to figure out how to do this. And it like just my triceps and shoulders are strong enough that I can yeah. like kind of like you know turtle turtle shell back my way down the down the thing and make it happen. Exactly that. All right, so this is very interesting. I love the I love the the notion of this like. It I I now I want to now I want to go back and I want to like see it done and like see yeah. what the see what the stuff was. All right, so I'm on, like you can you can probably do it a little YouTube -y and like just be like I have three forward roll. Event. I have three test four. Yeah, YouTube I have three test four um, on the YouTube. -y. YouTube F three test four. I I'm sure like some some video of it exists somewhere. Oh yeah. For sure. Uh and I'm sure it'll be the opposite of the grid league where it's like they're like you're going to do one fucking perfect forward roll. Yeah. And and then some dips as part of your test whereas like grid league's like do 72 for time. You don't need to lock out. Just try not to throw up as you're rotating around the rings. Uh it's hard to hard to find it. Um, well, maybe it doesn't exist yet. Maybe these are the events for this year and that. No, this is yet. this is last year's. Um, this oh, is the this is the Euros, twenty twenty three Euros. Okay. Uh, so I have three Euro twenty twenty three. Let's do this. Um, Hi, buddy. Three you. I have my my co star, right here. Maybe it, maybe it hasn't happened. Maybe I'm going crazy. It's we're really close to the end of the year. European Championship, Euros, prelims. When is it? That's what I want to know. Is when? <laughs> um, Can we find a date of when the competition yeah, is? No. Yeah, all right. Any anytime. Anytime. Um. Well. Anyway. So okay. So th so these are. I'm going to call these absolutely legit and like, you know, I wasn't really worried about that, but at the same time, you know, um, yeah. you never fucking know. Um, so obviously they've got technical officials. Woo. Um, judges for and finish trough is training and certification for international TOs along a pathway ranging from class one to class three. So class mm. one TO is an entry level, uh, ITO pathway. Officials must meet the initial qualification before they begin the testing required to learn the designation. Testing requirements to become a class one TO include a written test, in-person evaluation. Both must be passed within 18 months of each other. <whistles> class two officials are receiving special training regarding judging team competitions and judging youth athletes. TOs must complete the class two education course, pass the written test, and pass an in-person eval. Class three officials Specially trained to serve as head TOs, handle appeals, and evaluate other TOs. Complete mm. the education course, pass the test, and do an in-person eval. Interesting. Wow. Well, so they've got like a whole plan for how to, and then license For like their referees and judges. Yes. And, and one thing to note is it's not just rock up to the event with a can-do attitude and a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Although we applaud... The volunteers. We, I, oh, so much. Like Absolutely. the volunteers yes. go through so much. And we've said it m multiple times on this podcast how hard being a judge at the games is or being uh -huh. a judge at any of the events. Like if you're a judge at Wadapalooza yeah. and you're like, all right, I'm going to judge some athletes. And you're like, they're like, they're like, Sam, you're in lane six. And you're like, all right, lane six. I like, I got my clipboard. I'm ready to go. And yep. you're like, line up in lane six. The athletes come out. And you're like, I wonder who I'm judging today. And then 
into your lane walks Matt Fraser and you go like <laughs> then you know you, are you going to no rep him for most people probably not right um so it's like Ooh. that's just it's super hard like we've talked about how difficult it is to to judge um but i think this is something you know to andrew hiller's credit where he's like if you're going to make this a legitimate sport you also need legitimate judges yeah doing the thing you know to to hold the standard because They'll be like, here's the standard brief. And then they'll have someone like James Hobart demo it, who's like the best mover in CrossFit. And then you watch it happen at the games and you're like, that doesn't look like this. Well, so this is the president of the IF3. Okay. Um, so her name is Gretchen uh, Kittleberger, right? Oh, yeah. Her, yep. Do you know her? Or yeah. you know of her? Yeah. Cool. Like, do you know her or just no, like you've heard like, of her? I just, I just have heard of her. So like, I, okay. she's a known, she's a known name in, in my head. Okay. Like cool. when you popped up the picture, I saw her name. I was like, I, I actually know who that is. I right. don't actually know her as a, you know, as a as colleague a or a person or yeah. Um, she's fit. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this. So she's went to the games, uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. Yep. Um, she's. I mean, I don't know if this is still accurate, but like, yeah, eight forty Helen. Woo. You got a a one fifty nine yeah. Grace. Yeah, two twenty seven Fran. Yeah, you got a two thirty clean and jerk, two eighty back squat, forty seven max unbroken pull ups. Like that's that's pretty legit. Solid. That's yeah. that's real fucking so, solid. And like that's what you hope from right like there. yeah. <clears throat> so like, cool, very cool. Um share this tab so this is the this this is where i got this is the executive board for the if3 right i've got gretchen yep. kittleboard from the us anders berman from sweden mel robinson from australia and brenton stone i'm gonna google brenton we're gonna pop on over here i wouldn't be shocked if all of these people at some way shape or form had competed in crossfit and then they started this to try and like do a, a better way well if you go by Brenton's um, CrossFit Games history, the last time mm -hmm. he did the Open was 2013. Um, and I suppose okay. it's possible he's been trying to get the IF3 off the ground for 10 years, and so he's too busy to do the Open. Um, I don't know, too busy to do the, Doing the Open takes about 15 minutes of your life once a week. I am as fit as this human, just judging by this. He's, he's me fit. There you go. I mean... Listen, so if we got a second Captain America running around. Ha! <laughs> Anders Berman. Let's check out Anders I feel like I here. feel like I've heard that name before. Sweden. Probably. Not 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 that there can't be multiple Anders Bermans, but um so he does he does exist in the CrossFit space because he has a sure games he profile. Yep. He's relatively active, certainly recently. Um, loading, loading, loading. 2018. Okay. Uh, 120 kg back. 110 clean and jerk. 80 snatch. 70 kg deadlift. 330 Fran. Three minute grace. Oh, wait. Se 70 kg deadlift? Uh, 170 kg. Okay. That makes more. I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, 70 kg is, is like 154 pounds. Right. Um, not to judge, but that doesn't line up with like what the rest of his stats are. Right. Um, it's like that the math isn't mathing. Homie hasn't pulled the deadlift in ten years. <laughs> right. <clears throat> um, I. All right. all right. So we've got some some definite. Um, I didn't switch the thing. That's fine. Um, and then Mel Robinson. Let's find out who this person is. Bump. Mm -mm. Mel Robinson CrossFit. And we'll do this. Cool. Benchmark says she got a she got a profile, but that's it. Um, yeah. So the so we've got a we've got a foundation, right? A bunch of people who are apparently very um, passionate about this to work on it. Yep. Right. They got an ethics committee, athlete committee, gender equality, um, medical committee, health and safety. There is an adaptive committee. Um, so they're working toward achieving compliance with Paralympic standards, mm. programming committee, and a technical committee. Okay. 
Can I join the programming committee? I'm sure they are. Um, <laughs> the IF3 files a 990N postcard each year to the IRS. A search in the forms by tax event organizations provided on the IRS website. Let's go to the IRS website. Um, no, don't this go tells there. The IRS something. are mean. They, but they are. Tax exempt organization search. Um, da, 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 additional. Uh, so let's do the tax exempt organization search. Um, search tool. Search for a tax exempt organization. Search all uh, EIN. Do we have an EIN number? That would be helpful. We no don't. You just search so I'm not going to organization name. Um, National Functional Fit. Federation. Dun, and dun, go dun, button. Dun, dun. Okay. The IF3 headquartered out of Sterling, Virginia. And they just want me to print it. All right, I'll print it. Fine. <laughs> All right, you. fine. Fuck it. <laughs> details you want me to jump well, through your hoop you weren't expecting me to jump through your hoop but i did this isn't it's gonna want me to do a bunch of things i'm not gonna i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fuck with that yeah, shit we don't need to go um, that far down the rabbit i don't need to go down far, far down. so this is this is obviously like you know they've they're taking this seriously and they're trying to yeah. to do things um <clears throat> i think the 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 bigger questions are and and, and to be fair we went into this blind we yeah. had really no idea what the hell we were looking at. So yeah. I like the concept of an international body, right? Mm -hmm. I like the concept of, um, how do I want to say this? I like the concept of detaching it if we want it to scale from CrossFit. I think that's a mm -hmm. necessary evil. I think... I so. think I think they have some huge logistical and um, financial and organizational hurdles to overcome. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think it's going to be interesting to see not only what happens in the coming months as they make announcements and updates for this upcoming game season and yes. what changes may arise from that, but I also think that the next five years of what happens in competitive CrossFit yeah. will feature changes, maybe not the same changes, but changes at the same level of maybe discomfort as 2019, where mm -hmm. a lot of people are just like, whoa, you yeah. know, like you know, who would have seen this coming? And I'll tell you who saw it coming these two guys <laughs> calling it right now, <clears throat> calling it, calling it right now that it, three years from now, when all this stuff gets announced, like we, we're going to just blast this podcast episode all over the interwebs and be yeah. like, called it three years ago. I'll, yeah. we'll take our royalties. Thanks CrossFit. Yeah. We've got to figure out the payment structure on that one. <laughs> we do because we're just giving away gold ideas right now. And just like, you know, yeah. dictating the direction of the company. I really, yeah. <laughs> Savan likes but. to say he's the CEO, but we're the power behind the throne. Um, yeah, that's it. I so I, I love so shout out to Farron McKay for um, yeah kind of pointing us in this direction. It was a, it was a nice little rabbit hole for us to go down. Yeah. Um, like a lot of things, I think the biggest problem is going to be the fact that the majority of CrossFitter CrossFitters, I think, are Americans, um, yep. or at least right now. Or at least I, the the opinion and ego of yeah. the American CrossFitter is yep. going to be a, one of the hurdles they're going to have to overcome. Um, but at the same time, like to try and move things in the direction they want, you know, similar as kind of bringing it back to this year at the games, they might get rid of any divisions that aren't elite individuals or teams. Yeah. Sometimes to move in the right direction, what yes. will over the long term be the right direction you got to piss some people off in the short term um, well, it, it's 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 like any culture shift right you an organization has to decide the direction they want to go and based on their their core values and 
their actions, that determines who their avatar client is, right? Yep. You can't come at it the other way around, or you'll end up being like, you know, if it's like a business standpoint, it's like, well, my avatar client is anybody with a wallet, right? That's, <laughs> you're just, you're That's just dangerous. gonna, that, well, unless you're Amazon and then your job well, is sure. literally giving everybody everything they want, you know? Yeah. Most people don't have the ability to do that. And if you remember back to the early days of Amazon, that's not what it was. Nope. You know, it was like an extension of a bookshop that was online. Yep. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I think that they've got some very interesting notions. I, I'm going to have to like dig in and follow what they're doing. I just wish there was more coming from them. And so like, I want to go back and watch some of the stuff. Uh, I'm going to have to tune in and watch some of the events for the worlds, the European, yeah. uh, the Asian uh, championships and like, just see what it looks like. Um, yeah, I think that would I be, I think what might happen is we, you know, we're like, I, we haven't seen anything from them. Like we don't know much about them, but mm -hmm. then now that you've like Google searched that once, like the little FBI agent in your phone is just like going to town and yeah. just like, I'm going to sign, here's an ad, here's an ad, I have three everywhere. And so yeah. now all you're going to see and hear is I have three stuff. And you'll be like, wow, this is actually like a really robust and that like these guys are on top of it. Maybe probably, um, probably that would. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that was, if that was the case. Well, well that just, is how you know, the same thing is, you oh. know, you, you say Toyota Camry once, then all you see driving around and parked and things is like, all of a sudden you own a Toyota Camry. You're like, what the heck? I had a, I had an, so we're over the hour, but um, at <laughs> some point when it, we're not over the hour, I'll explain how those things work and why it's not somebody spying on you and why they don't. Yeah. Care. Um, yeah. Well, this is fun. And again, thank you for on for pointing us in this direction. Um, yeah. Final thoughts before we before we kick off and go do other things with our lives. I think the next five years in the sport of I'll say the sport of functional fitness and, you know, not just cross it. But I think the next the next five years of the sports is, is of functional fitness are probably going to blow everyone's minds. I think mm -hmm. it's going to start to take some interesting turns that maybe nobody but us predicted. So, yeah. Not nobody but us, but I'll, I'll I'll give us a credit for it already. Uh, I I know for a fact there are some other people talking about it, and mm -hmm. none of them are American. So that part is fine yeah. to me. Um, yeah. Final thoughts. Forward fucking support on to forward roll to support on rings. Like, if they brought that one goddamn event into the games, yeah. a shit ton of people would be borked. So yeah, I well, I think that, that would was, be hilarious. Know, I think it would be hilarious because it'd probably be the same thing as the. Uh, ring handstand push up at the games in 2016, where it's just like, how arched can I make my spine and like yeah. just lock my elbows out? Yeah. Um, Hilarious. Which would look terrible, but you know, is what it is. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everybody for playing along. Uh, hope you have a great weekend and into the next week. And Kevin, take care of yourself, sir. And uh, you as well. We'll see everybody on the flip side. Bye bye. Oh, yeah.